Um, we will start with public comment session before convening the meeting for the members of the public. This is your time to speak. So because during the formal meeting, you will not be allowed to speak. So if you have something to say to us, we would like to hear it. And now is your time. So um, we will have um, two minutes per person. Um, so I see Gary had his hand up. Anybody else wants to have their, wants to speak can raise a physical hand and wave at us or an electronic hand. Um, Marie, thank you for coming. Um, I see Gary. I see Gary. Is there anyone else um, would like to speak for a public comment? I don't see anyone else right now, but I will ask again. Um, uh, Lawrence, would you do the honors of uh, timing of two minutes? I have a timer. Thank you. Um, Gary, we can ask you to unmute and then we'll be ready to go. There you go. Okay, there I go. Um, I just want to be very brief and thank you all. I really want to thank the Board of Health, the Health Department, as well as the Senior Center mm -hmm. for making this go so fast. Um, I, I've, as you know, I find this very important and I really do appreciate everything you've done. I want to let you know that several seniors have contacted me to volunteer to help out at the Senior Center if there was uh, a need for volunteers. And I'm also confident that between high school students and college students, there would be other volunteers that would be able to help out at the senior center. And I just wanna say we are a community. Uh, we are a caring community. We can provide seniors with an environment where they feel safe and cared for. That is our senior center here in Northampton. And again, thank you all. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else here who would like to speak um, in the public comment time? Linda, let's have you unmute. Go ahead. Okay, again, um, I'm also um, uh, thankful for everyone around this rectangle. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for all the hard work that you've done. And I'm um, very strongly in support of um, Gary and, and all the incredible work he's done too um, in just mobilizing and just, you know, making everyone in, in my community, in uh, my cohort, we're uh, very aware of everything that's happening through the listserv um, and Northampton neighbors. Um, the, uh, the one thing I'd really love to see, you know, once you all make a, a, a final decision on, on mm -hmm. everything um, is to, you know, even form a committee of people, um, of, again, of my cohort, um, and we can do some problem solving together because I know it's not easy. I know there's red flags. Um, but I'm also um, aware of like new variances and everything like that. I mean, we, but we have to work together to find the, to feel safe, to create a safe environment um, for the older population in our community. Um, again, thank you, Meredith, you've been outstanding. Marie, thank you for all your hard work at the Senior Center. And Gary, you know, the way you've been um, get, letting everyone know just what's happening um, on a regular basis, it's, it's, been, it's been gratifying. Um, so if we, could, if we could have our say and um, all work together um, because that's, we all have the capabilities to do that. And I'd love to have to see that happen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else who would like to speak from anyone from the public? Wave an electronic hand or a real hand? Anybody else? I think that's it. Is that right? I don't see anyone, Joanne. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you very much. We always like to hear from the public. Um, so now we'll, uh, will someone like to make a motion? Oh, wait. I think we have Betty. One second, Betty, did you want to speak? Wait a second, you're not unmuted, hold on. Hmm. Betty has typed in that she's not hearing us. Unmuted. Uh, oh, there you okay. go, Betty. Okay, thank you. I just 
unfortunately I missed what people shared because I couldn't hear anyone. So I was just wondering mm -hmm. if it would be possible for me to get uh, a transcript or, or something so that I could know what people shared. I know it was being recorded. So I was just, I was just wondering if there's any way for me to get that, the, what people did share, Gary and Linda. So and Betty, if you send me an email, I believe we can upload the transcript. Okay, all okay. right. Because I, I, I'm, I'm not gonna comment because I couldn't hear what was already offered, so. There were two people who spoke publicly just thanking the board for their work on um, and moving forward with passing the policy that requires people to wear the, uh, excuse me, to have a COVID vaccination to enter the senior center. Okay, all right. Well, would but you I'd be happy I, to send it to you. Uh, that's, that's not necessary. If that's what was shared, um, I concur. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Betty. Thank you, okay. Betty. Anybody else? Seeing none, uh, we will end our public comment session. Uh, would any of the board members like to make a motion to open our Board of Health meeting? I move to uh, open the meeting, close public comment, whichever one of those is what we're voting on. Is there a second? I uh, will second. All in favor, Cynthia? Uh, yes. Lauren? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Uh, so tonight we are missing one board member at the moment, Suzanne Smith. All the rest of us are present. Joanne Levin, Cynthia Swopas, Lauren Levy. And we also have a number of, uh, we have Meredith O'Leary, the di health director, and some other staff people here, as well as um, Marie Westberg, um, who's the director of the Senior Center. Um, and um, this, uh, we said this is being recorded. Um, okay, uh, Lauren, you wrote a draft of um, a proposal for the language that supports the policy that we approved last time. Um, yes. Is there a way, Meredith, to share that on the screen? You're, you're muted. You're muted. Oh, two years in and I still do that. Um, so I, uh, uh, Lawrence sent me the draft and I made a few little comments and edits on that. Can I share that version? Cause that's what I sent out to all of you. Yes, please. Okay. Okay. Can everyone see it? Okay. Yes, is it possible to make it a touch bigger? You can use that sliding scale in the bottom right of your computer, perhaps? That little. No, oh, that's better. Do we need it larger? It's huge on my screen, but I can make it bigger. There's room to grow. A little bigger, sure. Okay. There you go. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> All right. I think that's as large as I can get before losing it. Can you expand your page to the right so we can see the rest of the comments? I don't know if we necessarily need to see them, but make your screen your your page wider. Yeah. Hmm. I'm using dual screen, so I'm not sure. I hmm. oh. <laughs> I can't see anyone else, but you guys can see this now. So go ahead. Okay. Uh, do we? Is it important that we see those comments on the right? I, oh, I, I, them? No, but I think I can. I, I have a second version on my screen. Um, I, I can. can I this this these really are placeholders for discussion. Okay. Some are more important than others. So let's start with this first page with the whereases. Yes. And the one paragraph below that that says the Department of Health and Board of Health. So uh, let's start with discussion there. Um, should we go paragraph by paragraph? Sure. Um, so the whereas over 48 million, um, that's statistic as of um, November 30th from the CDC. Anybody have a comment about that whereas? Um, Meredith, this is an edit you made, whereas the city of Northampton, the state and the country are experiencing substantial increases in community transmission since the beginning of November. Yeah. You put that in? 
Um, so so um, I have two comments on this. Mm -hmm. uh, first, we, if we, I, I'm, I'm okay to have a statement along those lines, but there was one that I had inserted further down along the same lines, uh, which was... Whereas Massachusetts and Hampshire County has experienced an increase in COVID-19 positivity rate, hospitalizations yes. and deaths over the past several weeks. The other issue mm -hmm. that I have is the use of the word substantial increase. And I had phrased it in such a way because I looked at the numbers um, on November 30th and I was not blown away uh, by the increase, to be perfectly honest. I admit there's some increase since November. I admit that I suspect things are not going to get better. Uh, but I cannot say, I, I, I cannot, you know, in my right mind, I think those numbers are not so mm -hmm. substantial. And in fact, there was a bit of a decrease. So if you look at the state level, maybe there's an increase. So I, I don't know if it can be more measured or a little bit less um, specific. So I can tell you just okay. from my little bit of experience uh, at Cooley is that in the last few days, basically since Thanksgiving, uh, we're going to see a big increase. You probably don't see it on the state stats yet. And we had a little dip because of Thanksgiving where people were not getting tested on the holidays when the testing centers were closed. Um, but, but truthfully, the reason for asking for vaccines at the senior center are not necessarily about an increase right now. Even if there were no increase right now, we would probably still be in favor of a vaccination re um, requirement at the senior center. So I'm not sure that's necessarily relevant. Um, so do you guys want to propose, um, do you want to strike that sentence or how would you like to proceed? Um, so we can move, we, we can move uh, the one about Massachusetts and marry them. Um, <clears throat> Can put it up top, um, and 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 Meredith, since you had added this, I, I, I realized maybe you wanted to comment on that. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, and I was when this was inserted, that was looking at this morning's data, mm -hmm. and we definitely had a significant increase in cases over the last three days. Mm. So we can merge them. I can do whereas Massachusetts. Hampshire County and the city of Northampton. Yeah. I should add that part of my job, my real job spent my day discussing with colleagues whether we're gonna use the word substantial or significant <laughs> because significant is a statistical analysis that we don't always do. So we can't really use it. <laughs> Okay. Um, so we could probably just say increase. Yeah, we don't need the um, adjective, but perhaps yeah. okay. the adverb. Yeah. Okay. No, but that experience and increase is okay. Yeah. I think the word yeah. substantial was the, yeah. I think okay. the word substantial was the question. So undo, undo. <laughs> okay. Um, Okay, and do you wanna leave it down the bottom or do you wanna bring it up to the top? No, up to the top is fine. Okay, um, <clears throat> next line. Whereas the Delta virus has become the dominant SARS. So um, these, these is our, comp, the, <clears throat> our um, sentence that I, I did not initially draft, but I was mm -hmm. just wondering whether we had, and perhaps jo, jo, Dr. Levin, you will know better, is do we have something more recent than June, 2021? That no, and can we um, still use two statements? Um, not necessarily, but it is still a good reference because that was our first data that was we're based on the Provincetown um, data. And that was the first time we really realized that uh, Delta was more communicable and, um, um, my only comment about this is that SARS COVID is not the name of it. It's if you want to say call the virus, it's SARS CoV 2. Big SARS dash, capital C, little O, dash, capital V, dash 2. 
and just take out the word COVID. Yep. Or you want to substitute the whole thing to say COVID variant. Cause cov two is more appropriate. Um, I have no problem with using that reference, but if someone had a more recent one. And, and then MMWR June 2021 does not, <laughs> I cannot tell you immediately what it is. So wondering whether we can give something more substantial. Um, it's uh, morbidity and mortality weekly review by, uh, from the CDC. So is it possible just to give a hyperlink? Yeah, we can reference that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, whereas unvaccinated people are five times more likely to contract COVID and therefore possibly transmit to others. That's from that same MMWR. Um, so that if you want to put those together, it's the same reference. No, no, that's okay with me. However. Mm -hmm. Any comments on that, Cynthia? No. Okay. Uh, whereas seniors are in an elevated risk group for COVID complications, including hospitalization and death. Uh, Alan Seewald had a suggestion that to add there that, um, and the senior center is a place where seniors are encouraged to congregate indoors. One more time, Joanne. Yep. And the senior center is a place where seniors are encouraged to congregate indoors. Great. Any comments along the way here? So uh, I hmm? so this was a recommendation from attorney Sewell? Yes. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. Okay. It's linking the increased risk in seniors to the fact that this is a place where seniors go. I guess. Okay. Um, whereas the safety and efficacy of COVID-19 vaccinations is well established. That's a CDC reference. Uh, by the way, thank you, uh, Lauren, for doing this very thorough um, document. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, I started from a draft from Cynthia. Cynthia, so she should she should be acknowledged. <laughs> <laughs> um, whereas mental and physical health in older people are negatively affected during the social distancing for um, are negatively affected during the social distancing for COVID nineteen. I think we should take out the. Um, therefore, a multi component program with exercise and psychological strategies are highly recommended for this population during confinement. Um, to take out the as well um, with a reference there. So yeah, if we can provide the, I Link. mean, I, I don't, I, I certainly don't dispute any of this. <laughs> Just want to know, can we, if someone decided that they want to go to the Journal of Nutrition, Health, Aging. They could probably find it, um, but we could add a link. Um, yeah. Uh, whereas loneliness and social isolation in older adults is a serious public health risk, are serious public health risks, putting them at risk for dementia and other serious medical conditions. The CDC link. Mm -hmm. So my only my only comment here, um, when when I, and that's a question maybe for Cynthia. I think the uh, the initial statement was, elderly adults are more likely to be lonely. That I could not find any statement. Um, um, and because I, I, I can't reference it, I decided to use that, which I think is just as more, um, which I think is, is, is pretty relevant here with a reference from CDC. And it's a recent reference, I'm assuming. So hmm? it's a recent reference, I'm assuming. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. Um, we already took out the Massachusetts. Okay, whereas a potential concern exists for increased COVID-19 transmission due to increased indoor activity during cold weather and increase in gatherings during the holiday season, potential increase in the rate of influenza infections and a natural inclination to relax protocol and practices as the public tires of COVID-19 restrictions. Any comments on that? 
I, I, the only comments I have is that this all seemed to be reasonable, um, but I wish the CDC said that. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I do think that there's a CDC page that says that has uh, risk assessments, whereas being indoors is riskier than being outdoors. I don't know about, um, how, you know, I don't know if it says all that other stuff, but. Um, I'm just going to do a quick search on that language. Um, mm -hmm. Was that something I provided you, Lauren? Yes. Okay, so it is so better written than I would, so that tells me I took it from somewhere. <laughs> so let me uh, just do a quick search on the language, um, but we can move on. Okay. Uh, the Health Department and Board of Health continue to focus on our most vulnerable populations as we cautiously provide guidance and regulation to protect those populations. One of those populations is our seniors. In August, 2021, the Northampton Senior Center reopened with a mask mandate and protocols to protect the members as they re-engage with activities in a live setting. This step contributed to reducing the isolation of seniors. Any comments on that paragraph? Um, nope, it's, it, it's um, I mean, I, I'm fine with it. Well, I kind of. Yeah, maybe more than we need, but I think it's okay. Um, Cynthia, any comments? No. Okay, next section. To provide additional COVID related protection to our seniors and enhancing access to the senior center. I don't know if we're enhancing access to this. Well, I don't know if I would say that. Uh, the Board of Health is issuing the following requirements. I'm not sure we're enhancing access, but we're. I think it's more in, in reference to we were told that a lot, uh, there are some people that don't go because the mandate wasn't there. So um, I think that's a rewording in some way. I guess uh, I wouldn't call um, it enhancing. Increasing, increasing uh, access. Increasing participation. Facilitating. Facilitating. facilitating participation by seniors at the senior center. Meredith, that's are you with us? Yep, just tell me what to write where. So instead of enhancing access, we're going to say. Um, facilitating, and you said something else. Um, facilitating participation, participation by seniors. At the senior center. At the senior center. Uh, by by seniors, Meredith, at the scene. By seniors, or, uh, take up participation the of seniors. Of seniors, by. I think by. <laughs> but take out the that follows it. Yeah. Great. Um, and then no seniors. Yeah. And then no centers. There we go. Okay, thank you. The Board of Health is issuing the following requirement. The Senior Center shall implement a check-in and verification system where proof of being fully vaccinated will be required for all Senior Center members, staff, volunteers, vendors, and visitors who enter the building during the hours the Senior Center is open as a Senior Center. This requirement includes any Senior Center sponsored event in the building. Uh, just right off, we did get a note from Alan Seawald says that, again, as the mayor mentioned last time, that we cannot include staff because they have not yet undergone um, collective bargaining. So I think, we, unfortunately, we have to take out staff. Uh, my other concern is we have a program called 
that we refer to as a senior center. We also have a building that we refer to as the senior center and they are not always the same. So I think we need to clarify when we're talking about the program and when we're talking about the building. So in that <laughs> third line, um, when we said the building during the hours, the senior center, I would say the senior center building is open as a senior center program. Um, I don't know, Marie, if you can help us out, is there some name for the program that's separate from the building? Uh, no, there is not. Um, <laughs> um, I mean, Northampton Senior Services encompasses more than just the building. And the building is used for programs that are sponsored by the center, but also programs that are sponsored by other organizations, um, such as AARP, the Food Bank of Western Massachusetts, things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, but the senior center as a program has defined hours where people come in as members. Right. right, but I don't, I guess you can't say that in what, except for the, I guess the next line is where you're creating waivers to that. So um, yes, we are op currently, we are open eight to four, uh, but that, I don't know if you want to list the hours because that, that will probably change if things change with uh, COVID. Yeah. So, for instance, we used to be open um, till seven o'clock on Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, and we are going to be open some Saturdays for um, when the farmers market's running. We will be the fitness center will, will be open on those Saturdays. So, would it be fair to say that the hours are listed on the city website? Um, yes. Marie, I have a question. Does the, does the mandate include, like, I know you talked about uh, last time the YMCA contractor, Northampton neighbors, your PVTA programs and elected officials. Uh, is that mandate because that is within your hours on them as well? That's what we're here to discuss, I think. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would just, on this number one, um, on the next line, senior center building is open as a senior center. I would add the word program just to clarify. You see where I am, Meredith? Just yep. right there, yep. But this includes any senior center sponsored event in the building. Uh, Marie, is it clear which programs are sponsored by the Senior Center, meaning run by you and your staff as opposed to outside people? Well, we, when we advertise those programs, we do say who they're provided by, but they're in our building. So I don't think people make that differentiation. But for example, there are other programs that you specifically do like an art show or a music program or that's really geared for the seniors per se. And are those other things provided to the public? Can someone who's not a senior, a member of the senior center come to those other programs or any of the programs? So Brown Bag and um, the AARP tax preparation are open uh, to low-income people, uh, and I just found out today that AARP is opening up tax preparation to anyone who is low-income. It used to be only under over 50, but mm -hmm. now it's going to be open to every age group. So, um, and that happens, uh, it's going to happen Monday and Tuesday from February through April. So that that sort of changes the the amount of time timeframes that will be waived for unless unless we I don't know if if we can we may have to find some way to serve people who 
can't show proof uh, without them coming in the building. I, I just, I'm not sure how we're gonna do that, but we'll have to figure out some way to do that. So can you separate in your mind programs that are open to the public as opposed to programs that are uh, specifically for the seniors? Well, they're all for the seniors, but they also are for people who are low income. So these, are there very specific, pro yeah. So which programs do you have that are open to a wider audience than just the seniors? The AARP tax preparation and the brown bag program. Okay. And then we haven't had, I mean, PVTA and um, Interfaith um, haven't come back yet, but they probably will at some point, but this may affect them too. And Joanne, we also, the health department run a lot of events out of the health, out of the senior center, whether it's flu clinic or vaccine, uh, COVID vaccine clinic, or, you know, coffee hour with the health department. We're there for a variety of reasons that aren't just open to seniors during the, the you know, the Monday through Friday operational hours. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's very hard and unreasonable to list them. So we have to find language just to exclude it. Right. So in number two, yeah. Lauren wrote, this requirement does not apply to organizations that use this senior center, I would say senior center building, where he wrote space, yeah, um, for the general public. Or I would, I don't know if we should say where the, where the public, other than senior center members, are invited to intend. Um, would that clarify it? Well, I mean, so we have people like, for instance, we have seniors come with their children, you know, their, their, their daughter or son will come with them. So, I mean, it, it if it, I'm just not sure if you're, um, how you're applying the waiver. That's what we're trying to clarify. Um, right. So if right. there's a so, program that is open, a program that is open to the public, what you know, in addition to seniors, they, which is mm -hmm. what I think what Meredith and I both are saying is that's a lot of the time or any time. So the wa the waiver. I guess, yeah. Are we gonna are we gonna say um, we're we're basically gonna when are we going to say you can't come in? So this requirement does not apply to the general public that uses the senior center for non sponsored uh, sponsored is not even the word I'm looking for non senior events or public events that are. I guess there are, there are two cases to consider, right? There are events that are sponsored by the senior center under a senior, senior center program where senior citizens bring family, like their son or daughter, right? That I think if they bring their son or daughter, yes, the son or daughter should prove, show proof of vaccination. And then I think you mentioned, Marie, is... The AARP uh, tax preparation seems to be a little, should to be an event that is not under the senior center program where seniors can show up. And I think these should be excluded from the order because um, they're not sponsored by the seniors and they're not part of the senior center program per se. But they, are, <clears throat> excuse me, but they are scheduled. I think they're scheduled. So when something is scheduled, <clears throat> we can, carve out something, either space or requirements for a scheduled event like that, because I think seniors probably do take advantage of the AARP tax. <clears throat> oh yeah, um, definitely. So I'd hate to exclude it, but I think the, the interesting part here is when senior, senior members are in the building, all this other stuff is going on. So the seniors want to be protected and um, so we have to figure out a way when all this other stuff, which I think is scheduled, 
and we might have to tick down them, you know, I mean, can they be in an isolated room or can they be, I mean, if the fitness center is going to be open during Saturday, I didn't realize that we, all, we still want to protect the seniors, but we don't necessarily need to extend that requirement to the winter market. So question, so anyone using the gym or playing cards or using the computers are members of the senior center, correct? Yes. So in essence, we just want the members of the senior center to have the vaccination requirement. Right, but COVID doesn't care who's a member, who's not a member. So I, I don't. That all, all the other events we're talking about are open to non-members and we're trying to exempt them. Uh, well, no, I mean, for instance, during tax preparation, a senior may be in the room socially distanced with a tax preparation person and a low income person who's 20 years old may be uh, at another table doing tax preparation. So they're not going to be, you know, it's, it's pretty robust. Um, you know, they're going to be from 930 to, to 130, two days a week for several months. So I've been trying to think about how we could do it uh, like we're gonna hopefully do brown bag, which is in the great room and people will enter from the side doors like they did for the vaccination clinic so that they're not blending with our general population. But um, we, can't, we can't do that with the tax preparation. I think so. that's um, separating them in space is great, but I think the seniors uh, will all know and when you put out the schedule, maybe you'll have a little notation under each event. If it's a, a membership or a senior event, those are gonna be vaccine required. Um, and the seniors, when they choose their hours or they choose what they're gonna attend, they will know because it'll be spelled out plainly, which events are vaccinated only events and which events are public, you know, exempt events. Um, so I think. Um, okay. I, I mean, I, I, I'm imagining that the seniors who want everyone in the building to be vaccinated aren't going to be satisfied with that, but, but it's better than nothing. I think it's better than nothing. And if you can put those public events in a room, in a space that is not sort of blending with the general senior population, that's a preferred, um, that would be a good thing to, as well. Um, so the tax prep or something that's sort of one-on-ones, maybe they can be in one of the side rooms or something that's a bigger event um, could be in that other, other big room. Um, but I think separating in space, um, in space and in time as much as possible um, is great. So if some of those public events occur on the weekends when the senior center is not open, that's great. Um, if they have to be during the senior center program hours, um, it is more complicated. Is tax prep uh, a daily thing from February to April? Uh, it'll be Mondays and Tuesdays from 9.30 to 1.30. And do people sign up ahead of time for that? Yes. Okay, so you're not gonna have a big crowd of people. They're gonna come one after another, right? Um, not a big crowd at any one time. Okay. No, it's not a big crowd. It's, um, yeah, it's sequential. Yeah. Mary, could you um, separate the times and do like they did in the grocery stores or Costco that first two hours are for vaccinated and, and not like scheduling if, if it's an issue for them? May, maybe. I mean, I know it's more complicated, but it's an, a thought. Maybe every morning, I don't know when the card players come or when the gym people come. It's every day between eight or nine and one, those are vaccinated only hours and all the other things are scheduled at a different time of day. I think that would be helpful as well. Um, well, I mean, we have, yeah, I think that gets really complicated. Um, um, yeah, but um, I think what we do is we tell people when they come in the door that you need to know that right now we have a program going on that's wait, the wave 
the, the, the vaccine mandate is waived for. So we just let people know what the risk is and they decide. Do you put a program out ahead of time or is there an online program so everyone knows what's happening when? Because you could write it there as well. Of course. They, before they show up, yeah. I guess I guess I, I I'm 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 okay with the idea. I'm, I'm just trying to, um, I'm just trying to prevent the possibility that ultimately we're going to find ourselves with one program every day with such potential, um, making it fairly complicated to navigate the senior center hours. If 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 we know that this is going to happen from time to time, and that's okay, and more than. 50% of the time that won't be the case, then I'm good with it. If it becomes a, um, a green schedule or red schedule, and it's like, a, you know, it's, it's, it's happening every day, then we need to think differently. That's, um, but I, I mean, perhaps by, by, by February, we'll know whether this is working or not. I, I know we're trying to find the practicalities here, but it does, um, I don't know if you're, thinking this as well, Lauren, but it sends a signal, you know, and I'm not sure we want this signal. All you unvaccinated folks come between one and four and all you vaccinated folks, I mean, we're just drawing the lines that society is drawing and causing a lot of friction. And um, I worry about that at a safe place called the Senior Center. And, and I worry about us as public health folks, Board of Health folks, making slicing the bologna that thin and so the other the other side to that is it's a mandate <laughs> you know and um here's what it is when you make your appointment now I, I know that's harsh but i just um and, and i'm trying to find some kind of common ground as opposed to doing the red time and the green time in between one and four um if if folks understand what i'm trying to say here so I'm, I'm concerned about that Mm -hmm. I, I I hear you. I, yeah. I I I see in uh, yes. For, I was wondering whether that that was actually even legal <laughs> to do something like this. I think it would be legal, um, but we already know that we can't uh, require a vaccine even for the staff that are there. So we're already carving things out a little bit. Um, the other question was vendors. What do we mean by vendors? Someone's coming to deliver paper or supplies. WB Mason, we have to make sure they're vaccinated to drop off supplies. Or we yeah, have I mean, to find another vendor. We have, a, we have a lot of vendors and we have a lot of um, other city staff coming into the building every day, so. All the farmer's market uh, vendors. Well, that that would be ex excluded because it's a city house. staff city staff is not a problem since they are yeah. city um uh, dr lemon how do they handle it at cooling dickinson because there's vendors coming in and there in and out of there all the time as there, is umass yeah there is a clause and i can't remember the details there is a clause about you know if a vendor is going to work you know one time they don't need to be vaccinated but if they're regulars um, they do have to fulfill all the vaccine requirements that we have for staff. But so they must get this, W this time limit, yeah. But they must get WB Mason and food deliveries and those kind uh, of folks. If they're going to deliver outside, they don't need to uh, like on a loading dock. They um, right. they don't need to comply. But if they're going to come inside, if it's a one-time thing, they don't have to. Or if they, I can't remember what period of time or how many days a year, um, then they do have to comply. I have to say, I have a hard time imagining the uh, FedEx person dropping off her package and to drop off their package, they still got to sort of show their proof of vaccination yeah, uh, right. at the lobby and they, they're going to just drop it off before the checkpoint and, and be on. So I guess, I, I, I suppose there's vendors and vendors, right? Is it a vendor that's... Um, just dropping off something and then they're on their way out? Or is the a vendor that is gonna have some sort of extended stay and regular, exactly as you point out, like to live in a regular visit? Mm -hmm. Well, we're, like we're having floor inst flooring installed. Um, we just, 
you know, had a whole crew of painters in the building. We have repairmen coming to re repair equipment in the kitchen, you know, things like that. So there needs to be something about outside contractors coming in to do work in the building. Um, we have, you know, when we have events, we have performers. Um, I think they would fall under because that's senior center programming. They would fall under this. Yeah. Right. Yes. So I, I I agree. I agree that I agree that this should be part of it. I mean, it it just makes sense from a you know, COVID doesn't discriminate between two different persons. Um, but I, I think the ultimate irony is the staff. Then the staff does not need to to have some sort of because they're protected by by bargaining unit and i realize maybe it's a non-issue it's just um it, it's just awkward and clumsy that's all it is awkward and i i had thought that we would add a number four that says senior center staff are encouraged to be vaccinated okay um we can't require it but it it gets it in there uh, but i think we're still stuck on exclusions um, just one more mm -hmm. thing that, I mean, I don't know if we'll be doing this in the summer or not, but usually in May, we start the indoor farmer's market during our hours that is open to the public also. Oh, I didn't realize that. I thought that was on Saturdays. That's the winter market. Oh. This is the summer market. And it, it's, a, it's a partnership with Grow Food Northampton that we have. Um, where there's a, a farmer's market inside the senior center. It's, it's really to increase uh, food access for our neighborhood, which is a food desert um, for many seniors. But it's once, it's once a week, isn't it? Or it's every day? It's once a week in our, in our building, yeah, inside. Dur during our open hours, it's specifically um, our, our own market. Do we have to decide now? Or can we revisit before May? Well, I think we have to define um, what we're what we mean by vendors. And I personally don't think the walk-in WB Mason vendor is should be required because yeah. they're coming in and coming out. Um, Marie's examples of the people putting in the floor and all that stuff. I just I just wonder, you know, what is MGB doing and what is UMass doing? I just don't know because they have to have these same issues and they're completely vaccine mandated environments. It would have to go. Um, so these types of jobs have to go through the chapter 30 B procurement process. And we could include that requirement that the vendor meets, um, you know, vaccination status in order to bid on the job. It could be as simple as that for for those contractors that are going to be in their long term. But that's the city, Meredith, right? It would be a, a city. Right. Well, like with if there is a job that needs to be done, right, central services and or Marie will write that um, RFQ or our um, yeah. request for quotes or bids together. And that could be part of the um, RFP. Got it. So we can add a sentence that said RFPs for work at the senior center will include a COVID vaccine requirement. Do we want to? Yeah, I mean, that? yeah. So the why, the why I'm assuming, I mean, I'm assuming that, that that won't be an issue, that that'll be fine, but we do have a contract with them. So it's the same, it's that language would would help clarify for any contracts that we have with outside vendors. So what does the Y do at the senior center? Um, we have a contract with them for all of our fitness classes. So they're providing programming for the seniors? Yes. Yeah, so I think they would that would apply because that's a senior center yeah. program. So I, I guess, do we need to detail the issue of the, 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 the RFP point was simply say vendors uh, who spend more than X time at any time, at any visit. I don't know, in, I don't know if we define that in minutes. 
Okay. To exclude the WB Mason person or the FedEx person um, or, or the Amazon package, if you have Amazon deliveries, um, exclude from those requirements, but keeping these that are there for more than 10 minutes or an hour because they are replacing a gasket in the bathroom. So, well, the definition, be... of, definition, definition of exposure is within six feet for 15 minutes. It would have to be at least 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes. And then, in fact, that could be just the, the threshold 15 minutes. That's I think it's reasonable. Short. I think that's pretty short. Because if we work for FedEx and you spend 15 minutes at the same location, I, I mean, that's, that's just not going to happen. Well, how about a plumber or uh, someone coming to fix? some drywall, I mean, I'm workers. charged by the hour. So they'll stay for an hour. <laughs> um, I also want to acknowledge that um, our other board members here, so. Oh, <laughs> Yes. Welcome. We are in the thick of, uh, we've gone through the first page of the whereas's and just fine toned those a little bit. And now we're trying to figure out um, the exemptions from the requirement for COVID vaccination. And it's so really we, complicated. Can we simply say vendors and visitors that will spend more, that spend more than 15 minutes, that spend more than 15 minutes, something like this or? It seems pretty narrow to me. Um, okay, so so I can't, I mean, I don't, we might not, uh, I'm not sure how we'll deal with that when, if the contracts that we already have with the flooring installation, yep. if they, they can't, if they can't abide by that, then I'm not sure how to handle that. Like we'd have to close, I guess. Well, no, they've, no, because you've already given them the award, you wouldn't be able to do that. They would have to be grandfathered in. No, I'm just saying we'd have to not have seniors in the building while they were doing that. Oh, work. gotcha. Yeah. Or, or you can keep the senior center open as it is currently and simply issue a warning because we can't we can't undo that. I mean, when is this flow okay. taking place? And and I, I think it's just if it's communicated clearly to the seniors, look, we've right. So they, this, they have... we have a flowing contract ongoing. We can't really change that without okay. becoming a headache. But again, I, I, are we talking about the next year of changing floors or? No, 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 no. It, I mean, it shouldn't take more than a week. Okay, if it's a week, then I think it's fine. I mean. I think the biggest concern for their seniors are, are, is the close contact. So that people playing cards or possibly even eating near someone else, um, they wanna know or be assured that that person is vaccinated. I don't think there's probably as much of a concern about a vendor working on a wall on the other side of the room uh, or, or doing a floor over there. Um, right. Yeah, so I don't think that's the main concern, although the more people in the building that are vaccinated, the, the better. Uh, the fewer exceptions we have, the better. Um, Any other thoughts about this number two? Um, I still think it's sort of confusing about what's included and what's not. Marie, just the way it's written now, um, is that clear enough? This requirement well, I mean, I think that if you're very specific that way, we're going to leave something out uh, because I, I, it almost seems like it should be that when there is a program that's being exempted from this mandate, it will be posted so that people have the awareness because it could happen that we you know, I mean, I just don't want to not be able to offer programs that are going to benefit people. And 
you know, and so I think if 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 we don't include something here and we then we can't do it, that wouldn't be good. Well, so the way it reads now is this requirement does not apply to organizations or the general public that use the senior center building, including but not limited to the winter food market, municipal voting, brown bag program. Those are three examples, but it, there are it leaves room for other programs to fall under the exemption. Um, but I think it's our intent that things that are programmed for the seniors, like an art show, like uh, bring your family, like some other th things that we've discussed would fall under the requirement. And things that are clearly meant for the public where seniors may attend, but is are clearly for the more general public would not fall under these. Yeah, I mean, I, I do think you should put something about there will be a posting so that people know, right? That it will be posted at the one entrance um, during senior center hours if there is a waiver, you know, a waiver to this practice or something. Because um, I, I just know that people are gonna say, well, I heard there was a mandate all the time. Right. Well, you can, you're welcome to, and I would encourage you to, to do that, but whether we need to put it in this regulation, then you have to stick to it. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea, but certainly okay. we would encourage you to, to communicate clearly. Um, other they, thoughts? It's not, about, they're not pop-up events, they're scheduled events. And, right. Um, yeah, there, there, there aren't many and you know, so I just don't want to create confusion. That's all. Yeah, I'm. I'm just wondering if that that schedule. Once people know, oh, this is Tuesday. This is going to happen. I'm not going to go today. I, I. I just wonder if it becomes a routine then. Um, yeah, I mean. Um, yeah, it, it's it's definitely things will overlap with things that people. Are wanting to attend and if they know it's in a space away from where they're going to be they may still come um any other comments about number two do we want to leave it this way are there any other ways any other suggestions on wording no i am i'm okay with this i just wanted just to briefly discuss what proof of being vaccinated entails. Um, are we expecting a volunteer uh, checking a vaccination card or can we leave with someone uh, certifying, self-certifying that they are vaccinated if they do not have their card on them? And or say, can no, we... Like, hmm? Or can we include in the re-registration process a question and then um, mm -mm. you're shaking your head, Marie? No, um, we've, we've, we've reoriented 800 people already. And um, I don't think that we wanna merge this with our electronic system that people are using because um, there's really no way to, police that whether other than having someone standing there watching what box you push right and there's no way to alert us that, that someone has attested that they're not vaccinated so I really want there to be someone right inside the foyer you know or right right past the foyer so that before people get into their general regular business of being at the center senior center that they are they are encountering this this table where they will be attesting or showing their card. Um, and um, so that'll be, you know, 40 hours of coverage that we'll need to, to do that. But no one will get past that table without attesting. And then what is the purpose of the computer where you put your little tag there? Is, is if it what is the purpose of it? Would so that is for collecting just... statistics for our funders um, about and um, basically taking attendance. So people check in um, 
to whatever programs they're going to. And we are, yeah. you know, we, for the renewal appointments, we have been telling people it's very important that you sign into everything you're going to do so that if you will have an exposure in one program, uh, you know, one room, we know we can then tell the Board of Health for contact tracing purposes what rooms you were in. Um, so, you know, it's it's handy in that way, um, but it also tells us what people, how we're serving people. So you would never, there'd never be a situation where you put the key card there and you get rejected. <laughs> you, you, if you have no. a key card, you're always going to get in. Okay. Yes. And if you don't have your key card, you can still get in. So. Okay. Gotcha. I mean, so you know, people people do get past us who haven't had a renewal, and and then if they sign up for something, we're checking those lists to see that those people who went to programs um, have had renewals or not, and then we call them and say, we see that you came here and went to something, and and we need you to come in and do your renewal appointment. It, does yeah, anyone? We, we haven't been policing the door. Right. Um, just not to lose the, thank you, Mary, not to lose one's question, but um, um, Meredith, have you heard anything more about the governor's initiative to have that pass, the laminated vaccine pass? E-card, the yeah. QR codes and the e-cards, yes, it's supposed to be coming soon. Is that, I? my impression was that that was going to be an electronic system? Mm hmm Yes. And in order to read a QR code, you need a device, right? <coughs> a scanner. Um, probably a phone. To show yeah. your QR code, you could show it on your phone, but to read it, I think you need a scanner device. <coughs> right. Hmm? The, I, I believe they can bring it up electronically also. It's going to connect to the MIS system. So it's not just going to be a picture taken of the vaccine card. Not, not knowing how that's going to work. I don't have a recommendation mm -hmm. for that. Yeah. <clears throat> so it, it looks like the senior center desk person is going to be tasked with this, um, with the job of checking a card. A vaccine card is that what we're talking about um well no we don't we're not going to use staff hours for this so i think um, the idea was sorry go ahead i'm sorry well if we have to if if we have to the city has to come up with money to to pay someone to do it then that'll happen but i i will i will be working on trying to find volunteers Yeah, but I think uh, the question was about how are they going to know if someone's vaccinated? And I think that is looking at someone's card and making sure that they, I, I think it's pretty straightforward if people are given the directions that it has to be 14 days from their uh, second vaccine for Pfizer and Moderna or from one vaccine of um, J&J. &J. Um, I guess I'm questioning whether, and this is more complicated, if we would want those who are eligible to be boosted? Because that seems to be a much better, um, better protection than a vaccine, you know, a year ago. Mm -hmm. It's better protection, but it's not a CDC definition of fully vaccinated. So aren't we kind of going out on a limb there? We can make whatever rule we want, I think. Sure. <laughs> just just pointing I, that out. Yeah, I mean, I suspect at some point CDC is going to change their definition because, yeah. you know, we, things just keep changing. But mm -hmm. um, the difficulty will be if someone was vaccinated recently and has not yet reached, it's not like everyone has reached the time where they can be boosted. So that's a case by case thing. Um, and whether we would still allow people who had their original vaccination and not boosted. Any, anybody have thoughts on that? Um, I, I'm a little hesitant to put boosted just yet, except beyond encouraging. 
as, as you had mm -hmm. suggested to include a Dr. Levin for uh, mm -hmm. staff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's subject to change later, I suppose, you know, maybe in six months, as you point out. Yeah, so we be can always revisit. Yeah, sure. I can tell you my place of employment, they're required that we be vaccinated. They're not talking booster at the moment. Um, do we want to make changes to the definition as, in, as um, suggested by Alan Seewald, who said, that instead of saying in the definition um, 14 days ago, that he would say 14 days prior to seeking entry to the senior center, at least, I think it would say at least 14 days prior to seeking entry into the senior center. Sure. Meredith? Mm -hmm. so, certainly prior. Where are you? Entering. Huh? I can't see you. We can't see that document. You can't see it? You're editing. We can't see. Can't see your editing. Are you further down? You might be further down the page. So, hmm. stand by. You might. Uh, you might be on a editing on a different screen than we can see. I'm sharing my screen. I'm not sure. Hold on. Are you going to add language about PCR tests? Can you see that now? No. No? Un unshare and share again? No, oh, we you can see, see your cursor now. Yeah, you see your cursor. Can you see the change? Uh, primary series of COVID-19 vac vaccines, a minimum of 14 days prior to entering the senior center building. You might just need to scroll up. We just can't see that for yeah. now. Now? No. Can you scroll your page? I, I am. So oh, I think you should unshare and share again because we can't see it. We're, we're kind of frozen on that one screen. Meredith. Okay. Hmm. It's not allowing me to share. Okay. I'm not sure. So I'm sharing screen, select a window or an application. There we go. Sometimes you can see it now? That, yeah, that oh. magic minute. Oh, there you go. Great. Good, and you added senior center staff are encouraged to be vaccinated. Um, all right any other comments about would, this section number one two or three or four and i would add for four and those eligible and encouraged to get a booster shot well anyone anyone eligible so it's not necessarily just the staff if we're not going to make a booster requirement we should at least encourage it mm -hmm. So that could be either a five or continuation to four without trying to be ambiguous that it applies to everyone. So do you want to make, let's make a number five. I'm making it. Can you see me typing? No, no that's so weird. The cursor is just a dot as opposed to a full error. But it's well, good. You can't see all my spelling errors. <laughs> All senior center staff and members who are eligible to receive a booster vaccine are encouraged to 
would be so. Is that a number five? Yeah. Okay. All right, any other comments on this section? One, two, three, four, five, or the definition of fully vaccinated? Any um, other thoughts? Um, just on number three, um, <laughs> so it doesn't really say people need to wear masks. <laughs> it just says they can, there has to be a mask at an event. Um, so we might want to, um, Say they have to be worn by individuals attending the events and activities. Well, you know, I we have a mask indoor mask mandate in the city, and I think that applies to everyone at the senior center. So I'm actually thinking that this would be confusing for okay. at, some, at some point if we lift the city mask mandate. Does that mean the seniors still have to wear a mask, or does it? Do they do whatever the mask mandate says? Um, That's interesting. Yeah, I was thinking we should just take that out actually. Or do we want to say attendees at the senior center building must comply with city? Yes, city I like license. that. Yeah, yeah. So city of Northampton has a mask requirement, an indoor mask requirement that should be adhered to in the senior or something. Well, like but but referring to the mask mandate, if we ever lift it, which hopefully we will at some point, then that that becomes an obsolete sentence. So I would say uh, attendees in the senior center must adhere to city policy or city, whatever you want to call it. Mask, pop, indoor mask policy? Sure. <clears throat> are, are, you, are you going to include um, proof of a negative PCR test as in oh, here or not? I think not. Any thoughts? I'm inclined <laughs> not to. Yeah, I'm, and just to, to get a clarification, um, my understanding is a, <clears throat> a negative after exposure, a negative test can occur the day after exposure, but then could be positive two or three days later. That's is true. That... That, that can be true, but it also is true that someone is less likely to be contagious. Um, and that's why they have a negative test and they are more contagious two or three days later. Actually, since Delta, I mean, this has been part of the debate, since Delta, people, even those who are vaccinated can carry the virus, um, even though they're less likely to. Um, so if we wanted the most safe situation, we would test everybody coming in every day, and that's not practical. Um, so I think having everyone vaccinated is second best. Um, I guess I'm just thinking about um, like uh, we weren't able to verify with AARP today <laughs> whether this is going to be problematic for the tax preparers. I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it won't be, but, um, you know, that was my concern uh, that they might pull the program. Uh, what we did during the pandemic was we just had people drop their paperwork off and then the tax preparer prepared the taxes and then the person picked it up so they didn't have to you know be in the building um so i'm you know we we'd probably be able to find some work around if we had to yeah i mean if we allow testing that gets into a whole can of worms around who's doing the testing and verifying test results and all that stuff right right um, and I think part of mask requirements are a way to encourage people who are on the fence to get their vaccine. And that's part of, part of the goal. Any, um, Meredith, can you unshare and share again so we can see an updated version? I cannot, Joanne. I'm, 
everything is completely locked up. Oh no. It's this okay. moment of the meeting, Meredith. I know, I have no idea what this is. So I'm gonna do something else. Uh, I'm gonna copy it. And then it's because I have to remote into my desktop. Mm-hmm. She's gonna copy it onto another document and try to share a new document. Yep. Can you see this? No, we still see the old one. Maybe you have yep. to unshare first. I can't even unshare. The Zoom is locked up. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't even end the like leave the meeting. <laughs> can can no. you email it to Kelly? Is Kelly yes. still yes. and she yes, can I share can. it? Yes, I can do that. <sighs> If I if I if I try to share, it would it would stop your other screen sharing. Would oh. that set you free or no? Yes, do, set me free. Someone set me free. Stop <laughs> my screen sharing. I'm sharing my whiteboard. Oh, good. <laughs> now try. You're so high tech. Can you take over? No. <laughs> Well, Laura, why don't you unshare now and then see if Meredith can come back in. Oh, yay. Okay. <laughs> Let's see if it comes back. This is painful. <laughs> yes. Yay. All right, so now let's, yep, let's, um, great. So oh, good. <laughs> so I'm just gonna read the new version. The Senior Center shall implement a check-in and verification system where proof of being fully vaccinated will be required for all Senior Center members, volunteers, vendors, contractors, and visitors who enter the building during the hours the Senior Center building is open as a Senior Center program. This requirement includes any senior center sponsored event in the building. This requirement does not apply to organizations or general public that use the senior center building, including but not limited to farmers markets, municipal voting and the brown bag program. Attendees at the senior center must comply with the indoor mask policy. Senior center staff are encouraged to be vaccinated all senior center staff and members who are eligible to receive a booster vaccine are encouraged, misspelled, um, to do so. And number three, we might want to say the city of Northampton indoor mask policy, so it's just not floating out there. Yeah, yes. I'm not sure we're going to see your edits, Meredith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we may have to play this game again. Um, and the definition of fully vaccinated means fully vaccinated shall be defined as having completed the primary series of COVID-19 vaccines, a minimum of 14 days prior to entering the senior center building. The primary series for mRNA vaccines consists of two doses, both primary series for Johnson & Johnson <coughs> consists of one dose. Uh, Marie, when do you think this is reasonable to start. Um, well, we we just missed the deadline for the Chronicle for January. I, I'm we might we might be able to. I know that there's not much space, but we might be able to pull something to add it in if we started for January. So your your uh, newspaper goes out when? Um, well, we just um, sent it to the Gazette for layout today, so um, it gets printed in a week or so. So it, it usually goes out a week before the first of the month. Um, and then we can also advertise that through our email blasts, and we could do an auto call. If we can't get it in the Chronicle, we can we can still get that message out to our members through um, email and auto calls. 
And in addition to notifying the members, you will also need to um, figure out who's going to be sitting at the desk and organize volunteers, perhaps. Yeah, I'm more worried about that, actually. But um, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to find tax work off people, but that's um, getting not getting a lot of applications. Um, yet, so. Can I just ask a question? Mm -hmm. Why is it you're thinking about the check-in process on a daily basis, every time someone enters, instead of doing an attestation of your members? Well, we can do an attestation, but basically we need to have a list of people who've attested and someone needs to be checking that they're on the list so that people who haven't attested yet are mm -hmm. still, getting, still getting stopped at the door when they come in. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, um, we can't be sure that people aren't just wandering in. We, we have people wandering in all the time. <laughs> So eventually, okay. over time, you have people who come re recurrently. Yes. Eventually, over a, some period of time, maybe a few months, you'd have information on a good number of people. At some point, would you want to get that into your electronic system um, where, uh, as Cynthia was asking you, when they swipe their card in, there's some alert that somebody gets alerted that, you know, they're not vaccinated. I mean, at some point, would that well, be? There, there's that no way. There's no way to alert anyone. It would have to be someone standing there seeing the alert on the screen go off. And so, it makes more sense to not interrupt the flow of people going to the screen, but to actually stop people before they get into the senior center to do their business. Um, and so. Yeah, the person people checking will get familiar with who's already attested and they won't, people won't not have to be stopped all the time because it will say, oh yeah, we, we know you've already been, you know, screened. So um, it's just that at, I'm anticipating that um, eventually we're going to get busier and um, especially if things change with um, the safety uh, with variants and things like that. So um, in the spring, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll get busier and um, we will need to have someone stopping people at the door because we get so busy that we're answering phones and we just cannot police, we cannot police it in, to the extent that we're actually gonna catch people um, once they've entered past the foyer. I mean, right inside the foyer is the door to the bistro, right? So immediately as you enter the building, there, there are activities going on. You know, there's a line for lunch. There's a line for the movie. There's, you know, when we're busy, it's, it can get really pretty chaotic. Certain hours, you know, it's slower other hours. But you know, on a busy day pre-pandemic, we'd have anywhere from 150 people to 300 people in the building. I mean, th those days may be over, I don't know. So when, I'm, sorry, Marie, um, so most people don't enter I'm sorry, parking. you're breaking up. Um, most people don't enter through the parking lot door? Everyone enters from the parking lot. Okay. Oh, I, I'm trying to visualize where the bistro is, et cetera. So, okay. Everyone. Yeah. It's the first room as you right when you step through the foyer. Gotcha. Yeah. On your right. And, um, and we will only have people entering through the back entrance from the parking lot. Does it make sense to leave the system you want to implement at your discretion what you envision would work best and then at the first board of health meeting in january um you can tell us how things are going and what works what doesn't 
can um, it 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 certainly it seems that we have to make a choice of a continuous verification or some sort of badging type system. Um, you seem to be inclined to have volunteering and consistent check, which you know I'm not going to second guess you on this because you you know the place and you know it can work, and I don't. Um, so I suppose we can always try something and see how it goes. And if if it doesn't, we, we can re, re have another conversation and see what can be done to improve it. Well, so if we don't, yeah, if we don't have a table with someone stopping people, what will happen is what happens every day is that people, I mean, we have general public coming to ask us for their vaccination cards because that's where they got vaccinated. We, we have all kinds of requests all the time, constantly. We have we had a guy today, a young boy, come in with a garbage bag full of books. You know, we have, we have drug addicts coming in to use the bathroom. We have every kind of situation you can imagine. <laughs> so um, you name it, like if they get through those doors and nobody stops them, they're, they're going to do whatever, you know, they're going to get past us. And, and, I'm, and I, as, as you say this, I, I realize it's, it's, it's never going to be entirely solved. I think as, as no. usual, you know, um, I've, I've, I've been to a bar in Northampton and it's not perfect. There are people working around without a mask. Um, so we can't, we can't fool ourselves. It's not going to be 100%. It's, we, we're just trying to, to, to improve a system to decrease some odds. But there will always be something that um, that does not quite work, and we need to figure out whether there's a large issue um, that makes this system totally ineffective, or whether it's working, you know, ninety percent of the time, which is fine by me. If it's ninety percent, that's more than zero. That more than the initial percentage, and that's really what. So I, I don't want to focus overly focus on the uh, the youngster with the bag of books. <laughs> Right. Because, you know, if he's vaccinated, not vaccinated, I assume the volunteer will probably have a hard time and he'll be in and out and that's okay. But I think if we can get most people to prove, prove, prove their vaccination and some people feel safer as a result, then I'll say, let's go for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I maybe, you know, if this is going to go on in, in perpetuity, we'll figure it out, you know, but... Uh, we'll figure out what the best way is, but right now, uh, this is how I'm imagining it to be the most effective. So, so I, is it fair to say that we should take out the language and number one, uh, the senior center shall implement, take out a check-in and verification <clears throat> system. I mean, the, the crux of this, <clears throat> this order is that the senior center um, people who use the senior center must be vaccinated with the exception of those listed below. I mean, obviously we, I, I don't wanna sound crass when I say this, Marie, I don't care how you do it, whether it's a check-in system, it's electronic system or whatever it is you have to do. I mean, what the Board of Health, their intention of the policy is to have a vaccine mandate for those that use the senior center. Right, and we'll, we'll figure out how to do that. And it may change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think implement, implementation is totally up to you and you'll figure out what works, what works best and that may change over time. Um, so Meredith, how would you propose that we change the language? Just take out the word uh, check in, check in uh, and just take that out, just a verification system. Um, the senior center shall require uh, <laughs> Require proof, proof of vaccination, proof of being <coughs> fully vaccinated. Oops. Okay. We can't see your edits, but we'll we'll do the on share and share. We'll do that in uh, when we're when we're all done. Are okay. there any other? Uh, edits anyone would like to make to this document? 
I am good. Have we solved the vendor issue? Because we have left <laughs> vendors, right? Do we need to define what a vendor duration, visit duration is, or did we just sort of this out? Well, one thing I think we said that vendors that already have contracts are, that doesn't apply to contracts that were already made, but um, for those kinds of vendors. Um, do we need to were, pull that out? You were talking about a 15 minute thing <laughs> yeah so i don't do we need to talk about this and i i think we left that kind of open-ended during that conversation what i don't so we say vendors that are grandfathered in i excluded already on an under ongoing contract um do we want to make just make something vague that says um Vendors are encouraged to be vaccinated when possible at the dis and exceptions at the discretion of the director. I mean, just sort of leave it to- I like that. that. I to, like uh, that. To figure it out. Yes. So okay. let's take out vendors. From number one. Let's take out vendors. Okay. And leave it at the discretion of- do we need do, to do, write that? Dale, do we even need to say that? I, I just think about all the regulations we've put on the businesses. Yeah. And they, they figured it out. And um, there could be vendors going in and out of there without a mask on. I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, or they must have renovations happening as well. And so, so I just don't know. On number happening. four, do we want to say senior center staff and vendors are encouraged to be vaccinated? Yes. And we'll leave it up to Marita deal with that. Okay, anything else? I'm good. Um, Suzanne, um, Suzanne, did you want to see the beginning of the document? Um, no, I'm good, thank you. Okay. Um, so Meredith, can we have you, uh, I'm going to try to share so you get out of there and then have you reshare. And then think about a date. No, you're still sharing. Hold on. Share. Are you doing a stuck comment? No. I'm trying. Oh, why don't you do it? Because I'm not being successful here. All right, Meredith, are you unshared? There you go. Yeah. And could you share again, please? Most certainly. So Marie, when did you say you um, thought you could be ready? Do you want to do beginning of January? Or is that really with? That I mean, might be. That might be too soon. I. I, yeah. I, I mean, I don't have any volunteers lined up. So. I mean, right now. Um, we don't have a lot of volunteers because we lost a lot that don't want to come back yet. So my, my sense, my sense is um, we will get volunteers based on um, feedback that I've received. Um, I think I'm okay to wait into January, but I wouldn't be too deep into January. So could it be something like the 10th or the 17th? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, I think if we, um, we, need, to, we need to solicit volunteers for this. Um, so um, maybe, maybe I can get that into the Chronicle as well. So shall we say January 17th, which is on Monday? Sure.
Can you see what I'm typing in? No. 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 That's weird. So weird. This order will is in effect starting January 17th and will remain in effect until lifted by the Board of Health. Is that what you're writing in? Mm hmm Yeah. Okay, any other comments on this uh, this draft? Would anyone like to make a motion? Um, motion to approve the draft with the edits that made. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Cynthia. Uh, any other discussion or comments? I, I'm, I um, volunteered to just check the language in one of the whereases so that we can add a citation. So I think that can be done. I, I was trying to do it while we're, while we're doing this, but I think it can be done offline. That's okay. Mm -hmm. um, any other discussion or comments? All in favor of adopting this document with edits and amendments um, uh, um, referenced by Cynthia. Um, all in favor, Lauren? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Suzanne? Uh, I abstain. Um, I'll um, say yes. Um, the motion passes three out of four. Um, thank you, everyone. That was a lot of work. Thank you, Marie, for uh, for joining us. It was really helpful. Um, and please let us know how it goes. And um, mm -hmm. um, great. Let's see what else we have. Um, we had talked last time about um, publicizing our recommendations. Is anybody interested in writing either a press release or an article for the Gazette, either about this or about our employee um, vaccine recommendation? Meredith, what's your sort of standard procedure when we put a new regulation in place? Do you do a uh, press release or something? Oh, you're muted. Hold on. I'm asking you to unmute, but it's not working. You're frozen. Do you want to type in the chat? Can you do that? <laughs> she can't do anything. She can't. Airplane. Maybe she can't, can't hear us too. I She thinks I can read that. <laughs> I can't. What does it say? Stop. SOS. <laughs> can't see it. What does it say? Can't read it. <laughs> All right. But I believe that she can, uh, Meredith can write. Can you hear us? Oh. You usually send out a press release. Yes. <laughs> That, that wasn't a big nod. <laughs> um, we can talk offline. A small that. nod means generally. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, it's certainly going to be um, publicized to the seniors anyway. Um, all right. We have no takers on writing anything in particular right now. Um, or you can text me. And so your question, Joanne, was you wanted to write something for the Gazette on, you said employee. Um, well, we have two things out there that haven't been publicized. I mean, these are the employee recommend, recommendation that employees be vaccinated and uh, the senior center vaccination um, <clears throat> policy. And I'm just wondering if someone wants to okay. write something. That's just my, just a question out there. Yeah. Um, I, I can take on something right now. I probably need to take a little pause, um, but can we, could we revisit um, at the next meeting? 
it's, I'm not going to be able to deliver this month. Sure. I'm just putting it out there because we had talked about that. Um, yeah. And so yeah. if someone, you know, wants to draft something at some point. Um, we also have minutes to review. I, I also think it's just, it would be so good if we had some more answers on the city, but, um, um, you know, to kind of do that three-way punch. So I, I, uh, I think the answer is that's not going to happen right now. Yeah, I, I just, um, I understand that. I just, I'm trying to understand the argument since we have these two big employers right around us that have gotten through some very difficult unions. Um, so if there's anything more than the unions, I, you know, so I just put that out there. And when you're the two big employers you're talking about, one is Cooley and the other is? UMass. who also just um, released they're requiring all spring students to have a booster when they return in the spring mm -hmm. oh. mandate. To have a booster. Wow, nice. Okay, any other comments on this subject? No, I just, I just sick and Vintia uh, on this is there's, if, if we're going to comment on a vaccine mandate for city employee, I'm not exactly sure how, how we can frame this. Um, well, we had written a recommendation that um, employees of all businesses uh, be vaccinated. So that's, it's about that. So you're simply suggesting to write to the Gazette to say, we encourage all employers. If it's simply a letter to the editor, that this just doesn't take all that much time. And I'm certainly, uh, I can certainly start drafting. But I, I was wondering whether you wanted to go, you wanted to do something beyond that. If it's simply a letter to the editor on behalf of the board saying, promoting uh, vaccination mandate at the senior center, uh, and, and we encourage everyone to get vaccinated, they, they, you know, I can, I can probably put some text together, although it may not be immediately, but certainly later this month. If, if that's what you have in mind, certainly I can start drafting. If you have something bigger in mind uh, that requires a little bit more um, research and, and discussion, uh, that, that's a little too much on that plate. But what, what, so would you tell me a little bit more what, what you were thinking maybe? Well, I guess we're generally fairly silent. And I guess I just don't think it hurts to have our voice out there, even in a very basic way, to encourage everyone to get vaccinated. Those who are eligible get boosted. Um, employers are just let them know that they are allowed to require vaccine for their employees and they are encouraged to do so. I mean, sort of general stuff to protect our seniors. We've now instituted a vaccine requirement um, for people using the senior center and just sort of general stuff. Um, but we are generally silent and, and Meredith is out there a bit, um, but we haven't been sort of proactive in that regard. I just, you know, it, it's a lot of work to do, um, but it, it just seems like the right thing. So thank you. And I, I just want to remind you, I volunteered to do a communication plan for us. Okay. I, I didn't anticipate that, you know, that there would be today, but, um, but I do remember Meredith saying, I wish she was, I hope she can hear that, that she too would like to see us be involved in more things. And so I would love to have that conversation as to what those can be, because I can do a communication plan, but you know, it just could be a plan. And so I'd like to get something more pragmatic, but your, your recommendations are so, um, are so, you know, I agree with you completely. Um, I know we are to make policy. I know that's our main job, but there are other ways that we can communicate to the public, you know, um, and I think that would be great if we, if we took that on. So on, on so many different, so many different areas. I, I went to the Northampton Prevention Coalition meeting and I found out that prevention is being thought of completely different when I was taking public health courses. You know, whether it be about opioid abuse or um, smoking marijuana, it's just a whole new framework that they're using. So 
I think we've got some knowledge that we can pass on. So that's a great idea, I would agree. Um, so if one of us were to come up with a letter to the editor, for example, that says those very basic things, we encourage people to be vaccinated, boosted, employers are, you know, can ask for vaccines for their employees, that we've done this thing at the senior center. Um, would you all want to see that before it goes out? Suzanne, I don't know if, uh, since you've not voted in favor of the senior center, I don't know if that would be an issue for you. Um, I'm, not, I'm not opposed to getting messages out of things that we've already voted on. Okay. And approved. Um, I, I just wanna say, if you could include that there's a waiver for some of things, because we're gonna get a lot of calls probably because of confusion, like people who want to come to the farmer's market will, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's not going to be a big issue for a lot of people, but we probably will get calls of confusion about things that happen there. Mm -hmm. um, so board members, do you feel like you need, would need to see a letter before it goes out? Or if I work with Laurent or whoever is drafting, uh, having two of us look at it, would that be acceptable? I, I think I'd be more comfortable if there are four signatures that everyone has had a chance to review. I'm happy to work with you. Um, but certainly, if I'm going to put Cynthia and Susan's name, it would probably be fair that. Okay, well, Alan Seawald has said we cannot do shared documents. So uh, yeah. if, there's, if everyone needs to see it, then it needs to be done at a meeting. Mm. So. Even a letter to the um, uh, IC, but we could do it as an individual. We could actually like say it was me that wrote the letter or Lauren wrote the letter and we say, we just wanted to let you know what the board of, the meaning behind the Board of Health's recent regulation. We can do that. Is that true? Um, I think you can write, you can certainly write one as an individual. If you sign it as a member of the Board of Health, um, yeah, if we're not sharing a document and an individual sends it on behalf of us or just as a member of the Board of Health, I actually think that's okay. We would hope that someone would only write things that the board has agreed upon, um, but we can't share a document. Since the fiscal year is- When we're acting in this capacity, but if we're acting as a private citizen, I think I would- like to pose it to him in that way? I don't know. Well, I think if you want to share a document with another member of the Board of Health on a Board of Health issue, that's sharing a document. I seem to recall we did something last time. It, it was not that long ago when we were thanking Meredith and the Department of Health for it's sort of, we, we wrote a letter and I don't recall how we did it, but I don't recall writing it during a, a meeting. But I mean, I'm not suggesting we should do the same if it doesn't pass faster, but. Was it to the school committee or didn't, or aren't we still supposed to do that? Well, I think uh, what I did is catch up with Alan Seawall about what we have been doing. And he said, not so good. No. Okay. So I think I want to improve our improve gotcha. technique. Um, so so yeah. our, next, our next meeting is in December. How about a draft is started and validated the next meeting so that it can be then published? But that means the when is when is our next meeting? Two weeks from now? Um, the sixteenth, yes. And I should add that I may not be able to join because I have to travel, but I don't know for sure yet, and I will let Meredith know. But I'm happy that between now and the sixteenth, I can work with Dr. Levin and, and draft something. If you give me bullet points, I can put them into text or something like that two weeks and it's not that much of an effort that can be done and that way uh even if i'm not at the next meeting this can be discussed and finalized and off to the gazette with a happy holiday at the end yeah i think we cannot you and i cannot share a document um 
I think per open meeting law, we might be able to talk, but we still cannot share a document because that's considered like a subcommittee. Oh, oh, oh. So yes. So what we can do is have a communication where you give me bullet points and then I turn those two bullet points into text. And then I send that text to Meredith for your next meeting. You can send it to Meredith to be a draft on the agenda for the next meeting. Yes, thank you. And once we get a fifth board member, we can do this much easier. Sorry, just had to keep plugging in there. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. I think sharing a document uh, to work on something is still considered a subcommittee meeting, even when we have five members. Okay. Um, unfortunately. Um, but I think that's what a lot of committees do. They have a meeting and that's where they work on their documents. It just happens to be a public meeting. Yep. Um, it just has to be scheduled and posted. Um, so thank you, Lauren. If you get to it, great. And if not, you know, it'll wait. It's waited this long. Um, Cynthia, when would you like to put a communication plan on the agenda? Do you want to have that on the agenda in January? Okay. <laughs> up to you totally up to you and it'll, it'll give me a deadline yep okay january our meeting is hmm. oh we didn't we didn't we didn't put it in it's normally the third week it would be the 20th would be the 20th unless any objections thank you kelly you're welcome Kelly, for our next meeting, would you um, do us a favor and list out the third Thursdays of each month so we can go over the calendar for next year and make yes. sure we have good attendance for those dates? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, okay, lastly, we have uh, minutes. Um, Kelly did collect um, input from the board members and then I incorporated those um, comments into the final or into this version that you received a few days ago. Did everybody have a chance to look at that? Yeah, I confess I procrastinated. I did not look at it. I'm going to do that quickly. Everyone, uh, yeah, and unfortunately, it still has some comments in there, but I included comments um, or changes from Suzanne and Lauren, but sometimes they were not the same, and I sort of did my best to put it all together. Okay, let's take a quick look. Meredith, are you back? Can you hear me? Yes. Hey, yes. <laughs> you missed a lot. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> so we're just giving uh, everyone a chance to look at the minutes because not everyone had a chance to look at them. And these are the minutes from October 21st. Brent, thank you for explaining how some things were not in agreement and you had to make that work. Yeah, there are a couple of words where you wanted one word and Lauren wanted another word and I just figured out what I thought worked best. But. I think there's a typo in um, number 3B, the last word of that paragraph on ventilation mm -hmm. projects. Should not have an E on it. Yeah. I, I like it, though. I like business S. <laughs> but I don't think it's correct. Okay. Well, should that word be singular or plural? I would make it plural. Right, Kelly, are you catching that? 
I am trying to, yes. Roman numeral three, letter B, the last word would be the plural businesses. Yes. Okay. Any other comments on the minutes? I don't have any comments. It looks pretty much all the comments that I had seems to be there. So it's good. Okay. Uh, any other last questions or comments about the minute? Uh, would someone like to make a motion? Um, a motion? Motion to approve the minutes after removing the red line that's remaining. And making the last fix that was suggested by. Uh, yep. Second. Uh, any final comments or edits? All in favor, Lauren? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. Cynthia? Yes. Joanne? Yes. Okay, thank you. Those minutes are approved. Um, that is our agenda for tonight. Um, any other thoughts for agenda items for two weeks from now? Um, nope, just a discussion of the letter that I have to write and, uh, and and the fact that I may not be in that 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 day. And I'd just like to see if we have any updates on the um, Board of Health position, applicants, movement. Meredith, do you have any information? Well, we did hear from the mayor last time that he was not going to move on that. And the question is whether the mayor elect was going to be working on it. And Meredith, any info on that? No, you're. No. I was just going to put it on the agenda. Just, okay. um, I, I just checked my email and I just got a, another query from an individual who wants to um, know more. So, should I, I know I, I've done this before? I just give them the application, but they kind of want to know more. Does, does everyone feel comfortable with me responding to that individual or should I just move them right to Meredith or? Cynthia, I recall before Laurent uh, joined, he he sat in on a number yeah. of board of health meetings, and and if that person isn't aware that they're welcome to attend, um, I would certainly make that clear to anyone who's interested. That that's this a great. Would, this would be a good opportunity for them to learn about what we do. That's a great idea. I, I hope I, I'm not hesitant and that would scare them off. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah, I remember Lauren was doing that. Always wondering who that gentleman was sitting in the, <laughs> in the front row. And I have no problem if you want to explain to them that the applications were not acted upon previously and now the mayor doesn't feel comfortable acting on them. So there's a delay and it's not a comment on their viability as a candidate. It's really just sort of a process that's out of our hands and out of their hands, so. But maybe at the very least, the mayor's office could respond to these individuals, just at the very least, because they have not been responded to. To say your application has been received and we're- Anything, surprised. yep. I mean, it's a really a hard one at a at a transition moment, um, and I and I take it as as they may have you know preparing the transition is probably their biggest agenda item, and I and I and I feel that there's only so much that can be done before they will take over that. Well, that, we can uh, ask. Yeah. We can ask. Yes, I can please. call the mayor's office and just ask them more. I can. Um, you know, um, propose, you know, a little letter that will make it easier for them to do that. I have also a suspicion we're probably not the only board of committee that has a bunch of outstanding applications. I bet there's been about 50 applications to the Arts Council in the past month. So. Uh, are these um, candidates aware that we do not make the decision? Um, when they, when, yeah, when they come to me, I tell them that, but I do not know. If, I mean, they're, that, that if they're waiting for us to act, um, that's, they're going to be waiting. I also yeah. recall, I also recall that at the time of my, since I'm the 
the last member who joined. I, I did, I was interviewed briefly by the mayor and then I believe by one of the city council members. That was Jim Nash in that case. So it's a, it's a double interview. It's short, but it's a double interview process. But it has to, that's, that subcommittee of city council is the one that approves all appointments and they, that has to, that has to happen. And so I did, I happened to talk to my city councilor and she happens to be on that committee or she thinks she's going to continue to be on that committee with the new mayor. And so she has it on her radar to kind of move appointments through, or at least maybe kind of nudge wherever the log jam is. Um, and Meredith, can you hear? Yeah. Um, I know the mayor was here last time. He said he only has a few applications and you thought there were seven and he thought there were four. So can we make sure that he has that all of them are get to the mayor's office? Thank you. Um, all right, I can call the mayor's office and just ask them if they could just respond or I don't know if that subcommittee of the city council can respond. They're losing a lot of members too, right? They can't. They, they cannot because they're only sent who he recommends. Oh, he goes first. So they don't, they don't even know. Yeah, okay, he's the first one. All right. Uh, any other um, business for tonight's meeting? If not, would anyone like to make a motion? Move to adjourn. Second. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, I think you got it, Suzanne. You're the second. <laughs> Any other discussion or comments? All in favor of adjourning tonight's meeting at 7.31. Cynthia? Yes. Suzanne? Yes. Lawrence? Yes. Joanne. Yes, thank you, everybody.